Welcome to another episode of literally the coolest podcast on the planet with the coolest listeners on the planet. We have lunch with amazing people, and while they feed their face, we steal their sauce. Welcome to Lunch with the Cool Kids. Welcome to Lunch with the Cool Kids, man. Listen, welcome to Lunch with the Cool Kids, the podcast where everybody's a cool kid. I am your host, Gerald Davis, and... I just wanted to drop that bomb. Shout out to the new theme song. Shout out to the new theme song, man. Um, welcome everybody. I hope everybody's doing well. Um, for those of y'all who are wondering, this is my favorite beverage at the moment, uh, Saratoga sparkling water. You say sparkling water, that's terrible. It's not. It is. It is. Sparkling water is terrible. Um, <laughs> sparkling water is terrible. But this sparkling water is not terrible. So my Saratoga story. So I have, um, I'm married. I have a loving, loving wife of uh, like 12 or 13 years or something, something like that. It was, it's, a, it's a while. We've been together for a while. Um, we had a, we did something. Was it her birthday? It was her birthday. It was her birthday not too long ago. And I took her to a fancy schmancy restaurant. And um, for those of you who think that gospel music is, for those of you who uh, who may not know, so I, I don't drink. Uh, so when you go to a fancy schmancy restaurant, and I don't mean a, I don't mean Cheesecake Factory. So, once we get a certain age, that should be a whole nother topic in itself. Once we get a certain age, we have to acknowledge that Cheesecake Factory is not a fancy restaurant. It's like the meals are like, you know, meals like $20. I, I, get, I get the chicken fried steak. I get the chicken fried steak. Um, my wife gets a spicy cashew chicken. You know what? Those are twenty, twenty-five dollar plates, man. Listen, that's that's less than a <laughs> that's less than some oxtails. That is four cartons, no dozen. That's what I meant. Those are four dozen eggs. You know, you go on the cheesecake. You get some eggs, basically. These days, you're getting eggs. So we have to, and listen. I have no problem with the Cheesecake Factory. Uh, Cheesecake Factory, if you're watching, sponsor this episode. This, you know what? You know what? This episode is sponsored by Cheesecake Factory. Uh, if you want to take your family out to a nice, good time, <laughs> have some wonderful cheesecake afterwards, and don't want to break the bank, Cheesecake Factory. Links in the bio. Cheesecake Factory is a wonderful place, but we, it's not a fancy restaurant. So I took my wife to a fancy schmancy restaurant, and uh, the thing about just places in general, y'all tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, the thing about places in general is that if you don't order drinks, they think you cheap. Like the wait waiters and the waitresses, the uh once again, let me know if, if that's if that's right. I think that's right. That's what I've been told. So um, if hey, if it's not wrong, you know, let's assume it's right for the sake of moving on. They think you cheap. So you got to. So because I don't drink, I have to find something to order to make it seem like that, you know, because when you say, oh, yeah, I'll have water. They're like, OK, <laughs> OK. We'll take our time with the water table. You know what I mean? I bet you want some squeezed lemons, too. You'll make your own lemonade. You come to the restaurant to make your own lemonade. That's what's happening. So you got to order something to make it seem like that you're not cheap. So, you know. So 
Um, I was like, well, what do you have? And um, it was like, he I, he said something. It's out of here in Atlanta. I'm not going to say the place. I, I'll say it. It's Nance. Um, and he said something that I honestly didn't understand him. <laughs> so I, I didn't want to be embarrassed. So I just kind of shook my head. Yeah, yeah, okay, <laughs> whatever. So he brought out this sparkling water, Saratoga sparkling water. And I was like, man, I am not 75. Because that's what 75-year-olds uh, end up drink. They drink sparkling water. And I'm like, man, okay, I got to drink this 75-year-old water. And I drunk it. And it was about to get, okay, you know that taste that you have when you drink sparkling water that makes it nasty? It was about to get to that point. But it wasn't. It was like right at the edge. And I was like, oh, my goodness, this is wonderful. <sighs> the key is you got to sip it. You got to sip the sparkling water. So anyway, uh, my wife, she thought, <laughs> she thought she was being funny, which, by the way, you'll probably never meet her. She doesn't like this at all. Um, like she likes y'all, but she don't like, you know, being in front of the camera. It's cool. She's one of those people who will, she's one of those people that that I'm not a fan of, social media wise. <laughs> she's one of those people who will see a story, read the whole story, look at the whole video, form a whole conclusion, make, come show me, hey, look at this, whatever, whatever, whatever. We have a whole discussion about it. And she'll never hit like. She'll never comment. <laughs> so. Oh, my wife. So. So she thought she was being funny and she bought me um, a case of Saratoga. Of the best sparkling water on the planet uh, for Christmas as like a gag gift. And I opened it up and I almost wept. I almost wept because I'm like, this is not a gag. This is one of the most thoughtful things that anybody's ever got me. I don't, man, it, I, I, I don't. It's not hard to please me. I, didn't even, I don't even necessarily want to be pleased. I do want to be pleased. I don't know why I said that. I do want to be pleased. You want to be pleased too. We all want to be pleased. It's not hard to please me. It's not hard to make me happy. Um, just the thought, it's, it's the thought that counts. As trivial as that is. So anyway, this episode is um, sponsored by Cheesecake Factory and Saratoga. How's everybody doing? Y'all doing well? These eggs are a lot, huh? I didn't get the jokes until I went to the store. And I was like, man, <laughs> these eggs are a lot. Do me a favor. We got a lot to talk about today. No, we don't. We have one good thing to talk about today. And um, I want to get you guys' opinion on it. And I think this is a, um, this conversation has literally been taking over my life for the last, last two days. For the last two days. Um, a situation happened, and I'll I'll further expound on it a little bit later on. Situation happened, and I put you know, and I posted it and asked the question, and I man, we got to dive into it. But first, oh, uh, I want to freestyle, but I won't. Cause I got my Saratoga <laughs> and my cheesecake factory. <laughs> um, if you are, if you've made it this far through all of this foolishness, we're basically family at this point. Welcome to lunch with the cool kids. This podcast is, um, 
it's an opportunity for us to talk. And you know, y'all get yeah, you know what podcasts are. I talk, you listen. That's what podcasts are. Um, lunch with the cool kids is it's the name. And the the secret is is that I'm not the cool kid. You are. You're the cool kid. Um, and if you wasn't a cool kid in school or in your place of employment or um, your level of expertise, or if you're not an expert at anything and you spent your life feeling like the outsider, this is not the place. This is the lunchroom. This is the lunch table. You're the cool kids. And what we're going to do, this podcast, is if you're like, okay, man, okay, but that, that was funny. Ha, ha, ha. But no, seriously. Why am I here? <laughs> this podcast, we're going to talk to interesting people and uh, we're going to talk about interesting topics and they're going to present what they have in an interesting way. And for those who are entrepreneurs and those who are creatives and those types of people and those are leaders in the things that they do, they're going to we're what we're going to have lunch. We're going to have lunch and. Um, you know, the best time to pick people's brains is over food. So I figure, man, while we're having lunch, I can probably steal all of their secrets and get the best stuff out of them. So there are going to be some times where it's just me and I'm a... Um, <laughs> it's going to be rough, <laughs> but there's going to also be plenty of times where we talk to some very, very interesting people and uh, we get some great life hacks and some great things because my, my purpose, one of my purpose, I think, um, a part of my purpose, I'll say that everybody has like multi-layered facets about themselves and purpose, uh, but everybody does have a purpose. Part of my purpose is to help people start. And sometimes, a lot of times, we get in our ways, own way so much by overthinking and being afraid and comparing ourselves to people who have been doing the thing that we want to do. Like, imagine if I'm like, okay, I'm starting this podcast. Um, my, I'm going to compare myself to Joe Rogan right now. That would be foolish. That would be foolish because, number one, I'm not white. Number two, what is, is he white? Is he white? He's, he's something. I'm not, I'm black. That's what I am. I'm black. I'm a Negro. And, um... And I'm a Negro who have who's been doing this uh, not as long as him. So if I compare where I am now to where he is now, he's got what like a 20 year head start on me or something. I don't think he's been doing it that long. Let's say 15. He got a 15 year head start on me. And if I'm, you know, it's not it's not fair. And that's what a lot of us do. We, uh, if if we're if we're a musician, if we are an artist, if we are if we're a creator, we look at the top of our field and say, that's what my competition is. No, it's not. Your competition is this little guy right here who just needs to hit record and start. Shout out to Joe Rogan. That was good. So that's what lunch with the cool kids are. Number one, you're the cool kid. Number two, we're going to talk to other cool kids and we're going to figure out what they did to be successful. And hopefully you can take some things away from that because I know I will. I know that I will. We're doing good. We're doing good. Y'all, I have a good friend. Dare I say... um, she's one of the best friends that I have. Like, um, I don't think she would let me call her a best friend. Uh, <laughs> cause we ain't that cool. <laughs> We're pretty cool. <laughs> We're pretty cool. Um, but like 
she is like, she's, she, we've been friends for over 20 years. And, um, you know, super high, super lows, went to college together, girl, you know, all of that good stuff. Um, there's not, there's very few people on earth that I love and enjoy talking to more than this person. Um, I just love her to death. I'll never tell her that, but I love her to death. I really, really do. My life would be significantly worse without her. Her name is Amber. I'm not going to give her a last name. And she never picks up my call. Ever. <laughs> Ever. <sighs> um, but when she does, we have a wonderful time. So, um, before we get into what we're going to talk about today, I want to introduce y'all to a new segment that's going to be called, let's call Amber. Uh, let's call Amber. Will she pick up? Bet she won't. <laughs> Let's call them, bro. <laughs> See. Oh man, my precious, precious Amber. Not Amber. Amber. Let's see. Here we go. I told y'all, she never picks up. <laughs> Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message. Imagine being on this side of the friendship. <laughs> like, oh, if I could just talk to Amber. Oh my lord, it's so funny. Maybe next, maybe next episode, maybe Amber will pick up. It's been an interesting. It's been an interesting um, couple of days. Um, I was talking to a lady. I was talking to a lady, and um, she had a lot of stuff going on. Uh, she was taking care of her kids, her grown kids. She was taking care of her. Well, her her grown kids was a daughter. She was taking care of her grown daughter. Uh, she was, and by proxy, she was taking care of her grown daughter's fiance. Um, she was. She's taking care of her mother, um, who's who's older, because moms and daughters are not the same age so um i was talking to her and and uh she was like man i'm i run, run around all day and i was like you know thank you thank you for you know thank you for being that person she was she was almost in tears she's like oh wh for what i was like because that's generosity and you don't have to do that and i think sometimes that we need to be thanked you know, it feels good. So we're sitting, so we're talking, and she's like, "Oh, thank you so much." And you know, nobody's ever said that to me. And you know, I'll, so you know, it was good. So we're going on in the conversation, and uh, I asked, um, I asked, uh, "So what do you do? Like, what do you what do you do for what do you do for yourself?" Oh, I don't do too much for myself. Oh, okay. Um. Do you have anybody to talk to? No, I don't. She's like 60-something. Oh, okay. Well, um, do you have any friends? No, not really. Do you want any friends? Yeah, I do. I do want some friends. And I'm like, man, this is, you know, this is getting kind of intense because I'm not 60-something. I'm a little bit younger. But you know, it's all but she's very open. She's very open. So um I'm like, 
well, do you go out? Do you do you go do anything? And she's like, oh, no, I'm, you know, because I'm running around, I'm doing this and I'm doing that with, you know, my daughter and my mom, and it, it just takes a lot. Well, ma'am, um, if you're lonely and you want friends, you do got to go to places where people are. You do. Uh, one th- one way that you can guarantee that you won't have any friends is that if you stay at the house by yourself, isolation is terrible. Isolation is terrible. Um, at my lowest, lowest, lowest point, it was when I was most isolated. Isolation is terrible. So... So um, I'm going through and I'm, you know, giving her suggestions like, man, go to a gym or like, what do you like to do? And she's like, oh, I like to go fishing and I like to go hiking and stuff like that. I'm like, OK, so here's what you do. What you do is you go to Facebook and you type in your city and what you like to do. So if you like to fishing, <laughs> if you like to fishing, y'all, I have a college degree. In what in English? If you like the fishing, um, <laughs> go to Facebook groups, uh, type in your city, and then what you like to do. Um, Atlanta fishing, Atlanta hiking, Atlanta one wheeling. Y'all, I had one wheel, and it is incredibly fun until you fall, and when you fall, it is devastating. When I say it's devastating, it's devastating. I fell. <laughs> but then I'm fat too. <laughs> I fell and I'm fat. And it's not a good combination. If you ever seen any one wheel commercial, you, you should look it up. Um if you know what what I'm gonna do, let me let me show y'all what a one wheel look like real quick. Y'all hang on. In there because I want y'all to see what your boy <laughs> was riding on. <laughs> oh man, I made a mistake. Here we go. Look at that. <laughs> y'all see that? This is a, this is a one wheel. This is where the one wheel is. That was that's me that was on it. And I had a wonderful time, y'all. I had a wonderful time. Until you fall. And I fell. And um You know what? No, no, no. First couple of times that I fell, it was uh first couple of times. My God. Um the first couple of times I fell, it was fine. Uh, I was I was I, I was working on some tight turns and then I Turned too tight and I fell. And then my leg, my 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 lead leg, um, stayed on the board while the other wheel, it's a motorized wheel. That's what it is. So if you go and you're still triggering it, it'll go, even though you're off. So that's what happened to me. And um uh my leg was on it and I was awkward, and all I heard was and that was my ankle. <sighs> Not a fun day. Not a fun day. Yep. Uh, sprained my ankle. It was pretty bad. You know, like my foot was like that big. It was crazy. It was. It was all bad. And I mean, I and then I was like, I, so I healed up. <laughs> I healed up, and I was like, okay, I'm getting back out there because I'm no quitter. I'm no quitter. I was riding up the street. Uh, I hit a, it wasn't a pothole. It was a, it was an inconsistent part of the street. Hit it, boom, fell off, boom, landed on my wrist. You know, when you fall, you're not supposed to put your hands out like that. You're supposed to, you're supposed to. Because, man, I studied so long. I cannot tell y'all how many hours I put in learning about this thing because it's so fun. 
So when you fall, because you will fall, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to lean into your shoulder and let your shoulder catch most of the brunt of the impact. And then it the impact then spreads to the rest of your body. That's what's supposed to happen. Y'all remember uh, Gary Payton Jr. Uh, last year? Well, the three of y'all who <laughs> remember basketball that much, remember when he fell and he sprained his elbow? What he did was when he, he, he fell awkward and then he put his hands out. You're not supposed to do that. Put that shoulder out. Spread the impact. Only problem is when you're falling, you ain't thinking about none of that. You go into fight or flight mode, and I flew. I hit that ground, and I put my hands out, and I put my wrist out, and boom, all the impact hit my wrist. And I already, man, I'm falling apart, man. I already got like, it's not good. So it hit the hit my wrist and then like I hit my hip and he's like, so then I was out like another, man, I was like, man, I'm selling this board. I'm selling this board. <laughs> Freaking one wheel, man. It was, it's the funnest way, it's, it's the funnest way to be incapacitated. Like there's no funner way to start slowly losing your limbs. One wheel. So, if you want one wheel, go find a Facebook group. You know, there are so many things to do. So I'm telling her this, and she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Like, are you going to do it? No, I'm not going to do it. Why are you not going to do it? Because I don't, I don't know. I don't want to, I don't want to have to, like, make friends. I think that's the most interesting thing. And we talk we talked through it and you know it it was fine. We'll see. We'll see what happens with her. Uh next time I talk talk next time I talk to talk to her. I'll let you guys know. Um but it was the most interesting thing and that made me pose the question. Do we really as adults know how to make friends? It's crazy. Do we know how to make friends? And um, and I posed that question to social media, and that sparked so much conversation. It's crazy. What I've discovered is that there are so many lonely people, lonely adults that are smiling, that are functioning, that are doing their thing, that's killing the world, but you know, they have a they may have a loved one or they may have a spouse and they may have kids and all of that good stuff. Lonely. Lonely. Because most of us think about it. Like, who are your friends? Like your friends. Your friends. I would say for me, I'll say for me. Um my friends are all from my youth. And I don't mean like 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 my twenties or what like I mean, you know, high school, college, middle school, you know what I mean? Like and I don't necessarily like it's so weird because like I've met I've met a lot of well, I didn't meet a lot of people. I was gonna lie, I've met a lot of people, but like, there's new people that's been new. There's new people that's been introduced in my life, but I don't necessarily know if I would say like I haven't met them. You know what I mean? Like social media will talk, you know, comment, ha ha ha, kiki ki, But have I actually met them? So I'm sitting here thinking, like, man, do I like? Have I? So it's a thing. It's a real. It's a thing. And when, like, I was going through my, you know, my dark point, and this was a couple of years ago, that number one feeling that I felt, I'm married with kids, that feeling that I felt, it was isolation. It was isolation. 
Do we know how to make friends as an adult? I have a theory. Part of my theory is that to say it out loud, it's very juvenile. I think like, oh man, I want to be <laughs> like, how do you even like, how do you even have that conversation? Because the last time that I had to make friends, I was too young to know that, you know, <laughs> I, 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 I don't know what I was doing. I, I don't know what I was doing. But like, when I think about making friends, I think of like, hey, uh, my name is Gerald. What's your name? Uh, um, Bart. Hey, Bart. You want to go play? Yeah, I would love to go play. Cowabunga. Oh, that's interesting. You sound just like the guy on The Simpsons. And then we go play, and then, you know, we have stuff in common, I guess. Like, hey, I like wrestling. Oh, I like wrestling, too. What about The Undertaker? Oh, man, he's been wrestling way too long. That hairline is crazy. You know? And then, you like, you, <laughs> what do you do? But, like, as a... As a 35-year-old, as a 40-year-old, as a 50-year-old, like, how do you, I'm not talking about romantically, I'm talking about platonically. How do you start from scratch and build a friendship? I, I posed this question to um, a couple of my teammates, and they were like, oh, man, well, you, you 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 got to define what friendship is because a lot of people think that a lot of people have different meanings of friendship. Yeah, I mean that's true. It is true. Um I don't necessarily know if getting hung up in what friendship is you know, I think that's more I think that's more chasing rabbits. Um I will say this though, one way to get your feelings hurt real quick is to put expectations on a person that they are not there to meet. Like you are treating this person like in the friend zone, you're treating them as a 10, but really they're like a three. And that's the quickest way to get our feelings hurt. Because if I'm putting all of these responsibilities and expectations that a 10 would take on, and they're like a three, like, hey, 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 I don't do that. I, I don't do that. Uh, now you like, oh, man, now, now you're going to post, oh, man, they're they're not loyal. And, oh, man, no new friends. And that's what the Drake talking about. And, you know, all of this good stuff. And you can't depend on nobody and everybody. Well, I mean, that's fine if they were if you were 10 and they were 10. But, like, if there are three, like, the threes, the threes. In your life is not gonna come pick you up out of jail, from jail. Why are you in jail? I don't know. Hopefully it's tickets. I don't hope it's tickets, but you know, if there's any reason that you're in jail, I hope it's for tickets. I hope it's you know, you know, I hope you're not hope you're not January sixth and people out here. But even if you are, like the three's not gonna come pick you up. The ten's gonna pick you up. I mean, really, really, the ten if the the ten is probably at their rating the capital with you. At the very least, at the very least, the eight. The the eight is gonna drop you off. The nine is gonna be like, hey, if you get too far, just call me. I'll I'll come drag you out. The ten is like, hey, bro, let's let's go jump that fence. But if you have these. We're, we're projecting what we want a person to be over what they really are. We're inevitably going to be hurt. So that's the one thing. That's, that's a whole different thing right there. If we're making threes, tens, then you're just setting yourself up for failure. And it's okay for a person to be a three. It is. It's okay for a person to be a three. As long as they know that they're a three. You know what? You know what? I was going to say long as they know that they're three. But that's a hard conversation. Hey, Bart. We have a great time. Drink Saratoga. Sparkling water. We 
go to live events, you know, all of this good stuff. We have a great time. We ride one wheels. I just want to let you know that you're not a 10. You're a three. And I fully expect you to do three things. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that. Let's make sure that we're not making threes, tens. So, I think part of the reason that we were hesitant to make friends, um, besides the fact that, like, you know, kids, when they make friends, they don't have, like, 30, 40, 50 years of disappointment and rejection and heartbreak that's stacked on top of their expectations. So when you, when you've gone through life, you've gone through high school and you've gone through vocational school and you've started your job and you've had heartbreaks and you've had betrayals and you've had backbiting and all of this good stuff, we, we move on from the experience, but we don't move on from the feeling and you know all of those little experiences they're like emails that's downloaded to our emotional mental inbox you know when when emails come like we see them come um but you get so busy during the day you don't have time like the ones that are important you'll stop and you'll read them but the ones that are like it's just a thing it's just a it's just a thing it's a promotion it's a happy you know all of that good stuff like those things that we're like okay I'll get to that later they build up and they build up and they build up and you look you look and like in the months I'm you got like a thousand plus emails you got like ten thousand my email my inbox is terrible. Yahoo, you know what? That's the thing also about sparkling water. It makes you burp. My Gmail is okay. I think my Gmail, I'll tell you. My Gmail is 1,108 unread emails. My Yahoo is... It's over 10,000. It's over 10,000. I'll tell you what it is. Uh, Home Talk Plus, NFL Update, Travelocity, Dallas Cowboys Gear, Cheap Air, Pack Sun, Food Talk, House of Blues, San Diego. I don't even live in San Diego anymore. The Tabernacle, TikTok, Nissan Certified Collision Repair, you know, Macy's, you know. <laughs> So all of these, all of these things, they build up and if they go undealt with or unaddressed, it's definitely a better word. They go unaddressed. It builds up and it builds up and it builds up. And then you have to do some big, amazing sweep to clean up your inbox. That's the same thing with our emotions. That's the same thing with our disappointment. That's the same thing with our experiences. We'll have these experiences one by one by one. And it, and it may not be huge, but it's something. And it builds and it builds and it builds and it builds and it builds. And, and you look at it and you're like, okay, I, I'll address the big things. I'll address the things that have my attention and, and it's urgent. But all that other stuff, I'll get to it later. And what happens is that we are now 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70. That's 70, man. Yeah, you listen. <laughs> I don't, well, I'm not 70, so I don't know. But 45, 50, 55, 60, you got a lifetime of unaddressed small things. And now it's a big thing. And now we guard ourselves so much. And all of those small things tells us that 
I don't want to be, I do want friends, but as much as I want friends, I don't want to be vulnerable again because I know how that vulnerability feels. Like I know the feeling of rejection and rejection is terrible. I hate rejection. I will, I will sacrifice my happiness to keep myself from rejection. Because rejection is, rejection is bad, man. Rejection is bad. So I think that's part of it. I think that's part of it. We don't want to be vulnerable anymore. And we, wa- we want to position ourselves from a safe space, as long as it's safe. Like if, the thing about school, how we made friends in school is that we, we had a proximity. Every, everybody was in the same place doing the same thing. So you were kind of, you, you didn't have any choice but to talk to people. And then, you know, you'll find a common interest and then there you go. As an adult, we don't really have that. Especially if you don't go nowhere. Especially if you don't go nowhere. Hey, dude, you don't go nowhere. And then when you go somewhere, it's hard to have that conversation like, Hey, how you doing? My name is, you know, Gerald and Bart. We did that. Um, it's interesting. And you know what? I thought about it and I talked to so many people, and I don't necessarily know that I know the answer. But I, what I do know is that God said, and it's not good for man to be alone. I mean, yeah, I was talking about Eve, but there's a general, there's a general principle there that we don't do good, we don't do well in isolation. Like we don't have people to tell us, like, man, you're tripping when your mind starts going crazy, or, or like, hey, you do need a break, like you're working too hard, or, hey, you ain't working hard enough, or, hey, you. You think that this podcast thing is working, but it's terrible. And you suck. You know, <laughs> you don't have those people. So, uh, by the way, I I wasn't talking about me. I'm doing a fantastic job. I'm doing a fantastic job. But we need, we need people. We need people. Um, and I do know that new friendships they're always on the other side of fear and it's hard to be brave enough to go to that fear and to go go through that fear and to reach out into and to introduce yourself to a stranger but you know the crazy part is the crazy part is that that stranger is probably on the other side going through the same thing. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? So this is what my challenge is for you today. Um, let me know, let me know if it's easy for you to make friends. Put it down in the comments below. And if it's easy for you to make friends, Tell us how you do it. And let's get a conversation down in the comments uh, because, hey, man, this is, this is the lunchroom. This is the lunch table. Y'all the cool kids, so y'all know just as well as I do. Let us know what's the best way. And for those of us who are like, hey, listen, man, that's me. I don't, I don't know how to make friends. I don't know if I'm brave enough to make friends. I don't know if I'm brave enough to meet new people. This is what I'm going to challenge you to do. I'm going to challenge you to uh, go back to Facebook. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're going to have to. You don't have to. You can go to TikTok. Go to a social media and type in your city and what you like to do. And, and a group will pop up. Select that group. Join that group. And engage in conversations in that group. And inevitably, that group 
is going to have a meetup. Here's my challenge to you. My challenge to you is to when they have that meetup, no expectations, just go. Just go. And you're going to be surprised that you are not the only kid at the table. It's a bunch of cool kids out there looking for friends. I'm looking for friends. Who want to be my friend? I'm tired of talking to my kids. I'm tired of talking to my kids. Had to look up. <laughs> to look up and see if they were out there. I love my children. I just said that for effect. I love my kids. I'm tired, y'all. <laughs> so, anyway, y'all want to be my friend, hit me up. We'll be friends. I wonder, too, if social media have a lot to do with it because social media. I, what I was going to say, I was going to say that social media sometimes tricks us into believing that we have real relationships with people via uh, the Ethernet ports. Uh, but we've never. But you know what? It's not true because I'm you know what, man? Um, I'm really starting to believe. That social media, social media and the Internet is as much of a real world as the real world is. I know that sounds crazy. I sound I I sound like the Gen Zers. I understand. Hear me out. Think about this. If you have a business, where are you going to market your business? Are you going to go to a website? Are you going to go to websites? Like are you going to go to a magazine? Are you going to go to a newspaper? No, I go to social media. And how does social media work? You you put your thing out there, and people comment, and you respond, and then hopefully they will Patreon, patronize, Patreon, Patron. Hopefully they'll buy your stuff. And most of us, a lot of us have e-commerce stuff. So you know what I mean? Like the whole transaction it, the origins and the meat of it is in social media. Um, for those of you who don't, for those of you who think that gospel music, I need to get that sound. I need to get that sound. For those of you who think that gospel music on Tupac, I'm going to let it go. Maybe not. For those of you who think that you don't have to be on social media to be relevant in this world, you are... Probably not relevant because this is where the world is. The world. How are you watching this? How are you listening to this? So I'm not going to say that the relationships on social media is not real. But what I will say is I don't think the relationships on social media, I don't think they're all, that they're fulfilling. Like, you know, you can only LOL so many times I am absolutely positive that y'all don't be laughing out loud I'm absolutely positive that y'all don't like this is this is a reenactment of y'all seeing a text mm. lol y'all not laughing out loud y'all are lying to the people and you should be stopped they're not real interactions. They're not real interactions. Well, they're real interactions. I'm sorry. They are. <laughs> but they're, they're, they don't fulfill those human needs that we have. So, um, so social media is the real world, but it's not scratching that itch as a ride or die 10 that's next to you. So in 2023, let's figure out how to get our teens. And if you got a teen and you ain't talked to them in a while, call your teen. If all you got is a seven, call your seven. You know, whatever. 
whatever the whatever your number is, nurture that relationship because, man, when you start wrapping up and you start getting ready to go to glory and that white light comes and start singing the upper room and stuff like that, it ain't going to matter how many followers you have. It ain't going to matter how many po- likes that you have. I was going to say post. I was going to say likes and I was going to say post. And then it was going to turn out to be pikes. And <laughs> I was just going to try to fight through it. Like, it don't matter how many pikes that you have. That's not correct. It don't matter how many anything that social media provides. It. I mean, shares. There you go. That's a good one. It don't matter how many shares that you have. It's those real relationships, man. It's those real relationships that you're going to hold on, that you're going to cherish at the end or you're going to regret that you never nurtured. So call you 10. That's, you know what? That is how we're going to wrap this up. Call you 10. FaceTime you 10. How about that? When's the last time you just FaceTime them? And maybe they're like Amber and they never pick up. <laughs> but you just got to keep on calling. <laughs> keep on calling your 10 and maybe they won't. Maybe they'll pick up like Amber. Um, Listen, I love you guys. Do you know that? If nobody told you today that they love you, I love you. I do. And I hope that you, if you're watching it on YouTube, I hope that you hit subscribe because I love you. I just professed my love to you. That would be a terrible thing to do. Um, I just wanted to, I, I just wanted to, I want to bring this out because it's crazy how many different people feel the same thing who never talk about it because because of a lot of different reasons, fear, embarrassment. Maybe you don't even have the language to acknowledge like, oh man, I I am I am kind of lonely. Now that I think about it, I don't really have those friends like that. Hey man, Bible says that if you want friends, you should be friendly. You can't be isolated and then complain about you don't have any friends. Why don't you be the 10 to somebody else? I was going to land that better. I don't know how I was going to. You get what I'm saying. Be the 10. Don't let nobody play you, though. But then, I don't know. You'll figure it out. You're smart. Y'all, it's been a wonderful time. Um, Be sure to like, subscribe, all of that good stuff. Uh, however you're listening to this, I certainly do appreciate you. And uh, that's my theme music. It feel good. So I hope this meant something to you. Uh, man, I want to freestyle. I feel like, man, you know what? I'm going to get it together and I'm going to put it together next time. We're going to do it. I'm going to just, uh. I hope you guys have a beautiful day, however you're listening to this. And remember, when you're in the lunchroom, you are the cool kid. Uh, Be sure to comment, do the thumbs up, whatever your ethnicity. Take that ethnic thumb and put it in the comment section. Be sure to subscribe. Um, We're going to find a home, and it's going to be dope, and it's going to be great. So until next time, thank you so much. Hey. Don't go yet. Yeah, you can go. We'll talk about it next time. (laughs) Y'all. Y'all cool kids. Y'all be cool. Is that a good tagline? I don't know. We'll see. Let's let the music play out.